Hi, in this video, I'll discuss Speedtree's Shape Control tool. Shape Control is a feature of the branch generator that lets you quickly confine your tree within the shape that is anchored somewhere in the tree's hierarchy. Shape Control can be used to make models with various looks and shapes. It all just depends on the Shape Control style you use, how many times you use Shape Control on the model, and on which generators it is applied to. Here I have a quickly put together tree model without any Shape Control. Before you turn on shape control, it's a good practice to be aware of how many polygons you are working with. The modeler is doing a lot of computation, and it may be best to switch to the low resolution. You can find this tool in the generator's shape control group. In the Styles drop-down menu, there are three options to select from. None is the default setting unless changed to one of the other two options. When on None, no shape control is applied to the model. The next two settings activate the shape control. The sphere option contains the branches in a circular shape, and the enable force meshes contains the branches inside the custom mesh. Once you enable shape control on a generator, all of the generator's children will automatically be included in the shape, unless you tell the generator to stop using it by going to the spine group and enabling the stop shape control option. You can tell which generators have shape control enabled or are included in the shape control by the blue ring surrounding them. You'll notice that as I click stop shape control on the generator, it will no longer have the blue ring and the shape control would no longer be applied to it and its children. Now, if you want shape control to be applied to one of the children generators, you just go to the shape control group and change the style from none. So next I'll demonstrate how the rest of the properties work on a simplified version of the tree. Once you have your shape control style set, you can then use the properties below to control the placement and size. A helpful tool to use when modeling with shape control is hints, which allows you to see how these properties affect the model as you make your edits. Now I'll discuss the properties that appear under the sphere shape control style. The first property, Position, sets the placement of the spheres along the branch's spine. A value of 1 is the tip of the spine and 0 the base of the spine, while anything over the value of 1 pushes the sphere past the tip of the spine. You can also use the green curve to control on which parent level you are editing the curve. The next property, Distribution, allows you to push and pull spine links from one end of the sphere to the other. For example, with the distribution property set to a low value, such as 0.1, all the branches will be similar in length. When set to a higher value, like 1, the branches near the base of the spine are longer than the branches near the tip. The distribution style lets you select what type of generators are influenced by the distribution property, such as branches only or all descendants. Something to keep in mind is that all your edits for branch distribution can only be done in the generator in which you enable the shape control. Now the next set of properties gives the user control over the sphere size. The branch's spine links will change accordingly as you edit these properties. Your normal spine length properties are overridden and it is entirely based on the size of the sphere. Absolute sets the exact size of the spheres, while the plus percentage of size property recomputes the size of the spheres based on the spine length. As you can see, you can use these two properties individually or together. Okay, that's looking good. The last thing I'll demonstrate is how to use the shape control force mesh style. I already have my mesh imported in the mesh asset, so next I want to turn this mesh into a mesh force. To do this, you just need to click the forces push button in the toolbar, go to add force mesh, and select your imported mesh. This will automatically add a semi-transparent gray version of your mesh into the scene. From this point, you'll want to move it to the position you want and scale it to the size you want. As you can see, the branches will change and conform to the mesh's shape. If you want to add multiple meshes, just select the mesh, 
Scale and position it where you want. Copy and paste it. And enable it in the forces group. Okay, that's looking good. Something to keep in mind is that as I move the mesh around, any of the branches that are no longer inside the mesh will revert to how they looked before the shape control was turned on. Here are the same trees I showed earlier, but with hints turned on. So now you can see the various ways shape control was used, whether it be multiple times on the model or just once. Just to summarize what this tool does, when the shape control is applied to a generator, the shape control tool ignores all the procedural links that you have set in its children generators, which results in the branches within the chain to do their best to fill out the sphere or the force mesh. Well, that is it for this video, and thank you for watching.